everyone, welcome to Little Things. This pouch is actually for my Sleeping Kirby pouch pattern and I sell the pattern on my Etsy shop at Little Things. And I've linked it down in the description box below. Don't skip over the intro because I'm going to go over all the materials that you'll need for this pattern. This pouch is beginner friendly, so I'll go over all the steps very slowly. So if you're a beginner, don't worry, I got your back. A lot of people have asked me if they could sell the finished product, and the answer is yes, you can definitely sell it as long as credit me as the pattern creator. And the best website making app for selling your products and to connect with the community is with Universe. So my favorite thing about Universe is how user-friendly it is. Universe is an app for creating websites where you can pick your personalized domain and customize your website. So I'm just showing you on my phone right now. There's so many websites template for you to choose from which makes your job so much easier. Everything is very self-explanatory and there's tons of features such as doodling, changing backgrounds, adding photos, and adding buttons to redirect people to other links such as your YouTube channel or your Etsy. And if you're not planning to sell, it is also perfect for the link in bio or to make a crochet journal to connect with your community. And there's this really cool feature called AI Assistance, which means if you have zero inspiration for your website, you can literally ask AI to build a whole website for you. If you're based in the US, Universe Cellblock allows you to sell your creations in minutes. Universe is free, but you can jump to Universe Pro to remove Universe branding, get your own custom.com domain, make discount codes, and unlock so many other cool features. And go check out my link in the description box and get started with Universe today. So now let's talk about the materials. First, I'll be using 5-ply milk cotton yarn with two colors and with 3mm hook. And I'll also use darning needle, stitch marker, and scissors. But you can use any size yarn with the corresponding hook size. So without further ado, let's get right into the tutorial. So for the supply, I recommend this crochet kit for beginners. And I got it from Amazon and I'll link it down in the description box so you guys could get it. It has all sizes hooks, a scissors, a row counter, a lot of stitch marker, and darning needle. So this is like all the essentials for crocheting, so yeah. So I'll be starting with my white yarn, but if you want to do my Kirby pouch, you should start with a purple yarn. And this pouch pattern that I'm gonna do is completely customizable. You can make it any size, you can make it wider, you can make it taller. So the pattern for this pouch is exactly the same as my Kirby pouch. It's just the colors that are different. So if you want to make my Kirby pouch, you can get my pattern on my Etsy shop and it's linked in the description as well. So yeah, let's start with the white yarn. First, we're going to start with making a slip knot. To make a slip knot, we're gonna hold the tail of the yarn with our right hand. And then for our left hand, I'm pointing up two fingers. Then I'm gonna use this side, like the inside of my fingers to grab the yarn on my right like this and then grab it once. So basically like wrap the yarn around your finger once. So I'm gonna pull through this tail through the loop on my left hand. So I'm just gonna grab the tail on my right using like my thumb on my left and then just pull it on both sides just like this now you have a loop on the top and then a knot here and then a tail at the bottom you can hold the knot and then pull the tail to just the size of the loop on the top i'm using 3.5 millimeter but you can use three millimeter so now we have a loop here we're just gonna insert our hook into that loop just like this. Now I'm gonna show you how I hold my yarn and how I hold my hook. We're gonna wrap our yarn around our three fingers once. This creates like a tighter tension and the stitches would be um, tighter and more consistent. So I'm just going behind and then under. So basically wrap my yarn around my three fingers once and then I'm gonna go behind my index finger just like this. And then for these two fingers, my ring finger and pinky, I'm just going to hold it. Then with my middle finger and thumb, I'm just going to hold my piece. And the same thing for my index finger, it's always pointed up. Then the way I'm holding my hook, I'm just holding it just like how I'm writing and nothing really special about this. So first I'm going to tighten the loop on my hook here. We just need this to be a little bit tighter so we can just pull the tail. We just need the loop to be a little bit tighter just so our loop wouldn't slip off but loose enough that our hook can easily slide. So now let's start 
by making a foundation chain we're first going to chain 21 so to chain we're first going to yarn over so this is a working yarn we're going to bring our hook to the back of the working yarn like this like behind and then we're gonna go on top like this and this is called a yarn over so now that my hook has grabbed the working yarn like this on top and over then we're gonna pull the working yarn through the loop on our hook so we just pull it through just like this now we have a v this counts as one chain so one v equals to one chain now we're gonna do this 20 more times so again yarn over bring the hook to the back of the working yarn and then on top and over like this basically wrap the yarn around your hook once then pull it through the loop on your hook here just like this now we have two v's and then again yarn over bring the hook over the working yarn and then pull it through the loop on your hook again yarn over pull it through the loop on your hook again and then pull it through just like this now I'm going to demonstrate it one more time and I think everyone got the gist of it so bring the hook to the back of the work here and then on top now you've grabbed the yarn from above we're going to pull it through the loop on your hook just like this now we're gonna do a total of 21 chains so now we've done two four six six chains and you can count this by counting the number of v's and one v equals to one chain now i'm gonna keep doing this until i reach 21 chains if you forget how to do it you can rewatch the video because we're just going to repeat the same thing yarn over pull it through yarn over So I have got 21 chains, but let's just say you accidentally chain one more. Now that you have 22 chains, which is one more extra chain, so what we can do is to undo one of the chains. So we can take our hook out and then grab the working yarn and then gently, slowly pull it. And this would undo one chain and you can undo as much as you want until you get 21 so no worries if you accidentally chain more now that we've finished the foundation chain we're gonna start round one so round one till the end of the pouch it is all double crochet so for our very first double crochet we're going to insert our hook into the third chain from our hook this v that's closest to our hook is the first v and the one below it is the second v the one below the second is the third so it's basically this v here so i'm gonna place my thumb on the third v just to remind myself that this is the third one now let's do our double crochet so to do our double crochet before inserting our hook we need to yarn over so bring our hook behind and then on top of the working yarn just like this just like how we chained before then we're going to insert our hook into the third chain so this v right here we're basically going in the middle of the v so you're going through like a loop now we've inserted our hook into the chain we're going to do a double crochet so yarn over bring your hook on top of the working yarn then we're gonna pull it through the chain so pull it through this loop which is the chain then we now have three loops on our hook we're going to yarn over again so bring the hook over 
and on top of the working yarn. Then we're going to just pull it through the first two loops on our hook. So I've pulled through the first loop and then the second loop. Now I'm left with two loops on our hook. We're going to yarn over and pull through all two of them. So yarn over, then we're gonna pull through both loops, just like this. So now we're going to place the stitch marker into the very first stitch to indicate that it is the very first stitch. If you look at your very first stitch from the top here, you can see a V and this V is exactly where we're gonna be inserting our stitch marker into, just like this. If you look at it from the side, you can see two Vs here and then the top V. Then we're gonna stick our hook back into the loop, pull the working yarn, and then keep on crocheting. We're gonna make a whole row of double crochet all across the chain. So now let's move on to the next chain. So I like to just put my finger on the chain that I'm gonna be inserting my hook into just to remind myself. So basically this, you can see that the chain is so stretched out because the first double crochet is in it. And then the one on the left here, which is the V next to it, is the following chain that we need to do our second crochet in. So first yarn over, bring the hook over and on top of the working yarn here. Then insert our hook into the next chain, which is the next V. And then you're basically going through a loop here. Then we're going to yarn over, pull it through the chain, which is the first loop here. And then from now on, we're just going to yarn over and pull through just the first two loops. So yarn over, and then pull through just the first two loops here, which is these two, the first loop, and the second loop. Now we're left with two loops. We're going to yarn over and pull through the two loops. Wrap the yarn around the working yarn, and then pull it through the two loops, just like this. And this is our second double crochet. Now I'm gonna move a stitch further, a, a chain further. This is our following chain basically the V on its left. So yarn over first, and then insert our hook into the third chain, just going right in the middle of the chain. You'll go through one loop. Now we're going to yarn over, bring the hook on top of the working yarn, and then just pull it through the chain. Now we have three loops on our hook. We're going to yarn over, and then just pull through the first two loops here. Just like this. So I'm left with two loops. So try it and yarn over and then pull it through the rest of the two loops. Just like this. For the fourth one, it's a chain on its left, which is here. So we start by yarning over, wrap the yarn around your hook once, then insert your hook into the chain. Then yarn over, pull it through the stitch, pull it through the chain, which is the very first loop. Then we're left with three loops on our hook. We're going to yarn over, then pull through the first two loops. Then left with two loops on our hook, yarn over, pull through two loops, just like this. Now I'm going to demonstrate it one more time. So the V on its left, which is this one, first we yarn over, insert our hook into the V, then yarn over, pull it through the chain. Now we're left with three loops on our hook, yarn over, pull through just the first two loops. Now we're left with two loops on our hook, yarn over, pull through the, the two loops, just like this. We're going to repeat this until the end of the foundation chain. So basically just doing one double crochet in each chain like this. 
So if you are confused or you forgot how to do it, you can rewatch this part because basically what I did here is what you're gonna do repeatedly all across the foundation chain. So let's just say you accidentally made one extra double crochet in the exact same chain. You can remove the hook and just pull the working yarn and undo one um, double crochet and then keep on crocheting. So now I'm on my very last chain and on the very last chain, we're gonna do something special here. We're gonna place a total of three double crochet into this chain and this would create like a turning point for our work and then after the three double crochet we're gonna be working from the bottom of our work and then start working our work in rounds to create that pouch now let's put our first double crochet in the last stitch just like how we did before nothing changed The first one, we're going to place two more. So the second double crochet into the last chain. And then the third one. You can see that this chain is so stretched out that it's so um, easy to see. So basically just stick your hook in there. Just like this. Now we need to close this up because you can see it's very big, like the hole is very big. So we can just pull the tail here. Just pull it and then this would close up. Now I'll be working from the bottom, so turn your work. Now we're going to be making one double crochet in each stitch or each chain. So you can pull your work and then you can see that the three double crochet that you made in the exact same chain is gonna be sticking together. So obviously this chain here is the very first chain. We're gonna skip that. We're gonna start our first double crochet in the second double crochet. So we're gonna yarn over first. So you can see that at the bottom here, there is little bumps and each little bump represent one stitch. Now for the very first double crochet, we've already done it because we've done three double crochet in the very last chain. So one of the double crochet is the very first stitch. Now we're gonna move on to the second stitch. So basically this one right here. So insert our hook into this chain. So how do you know where to insert your hook? Basically, we're gonna insert our hook right at the top of the double crochet at the bottom. So this is the corresponding double crochet at the bottom. Then place a double crochet, so yarn over, pull it through. Now it'll bring up a loop. Now we have three loops on our hook. Yarn over, pull it through two, just like normal. Then pull it through, yarn over and pull it through the rest of the two. Just like a normal double crochet. Now we're gonna do it again, yarn over first. This double crochet is a previous double crochet that we use for reference. So the double crochet next to it, which is on its left, is the double crochet that we're gonna reference now. So this does double crochet and the space right above it is where we're gonna be inserting our hook into. And then also you can see this tail here, we're gonna place it on top of our hook like this, so that we can hide the tail inside the stitches. And then yarn over, pull it through. Now we got three loops on our hook. Yarn over, pull it through two. We're left with two loops on our hook. Yarn over, pull it through the rest of the two. And you can see that the tail is inside the stitches now, so we don't have to hide it later, which saves us a lot of time. So again, yarn over, 
find the corresponding stitch here or you can look at the bumps here you can see that where it has like tiny little holes here is where you're going to be inserting your hook into also mind that the tail is also going to be caught on your hook yarn over pull it through now we have three loops on our hook yarn over pull it through two yarn over pull it through two just like this so again yarn over first insert your hook into the little bump here the tail has to be caught on our hook yarn over pull it through now we have three loops on our hook yarn over pull it through two and then yarn over pull it through the rest of the two now you can see both sides is going to be the same each side has a corresponding double crochet on the other side so again yarn over first insert our hook into the next chain space yarn over pull it through now we have three loops on our hook yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through the rest of the two we're gonna repeat this until the end so now i'm on my very last stitch here so i'm just gonna place my last one into the chain space and if you remember on the side here for on our turning point there's three double crochet in total so we have one and then one double crochet at the bottom so equals to two we need to have three so we need to do one more double crochet into this last chain so make another one in the exact same chain chain space on the last chain space here on this side should be two you should have two double crochet in the same stitch now we're going to join to the very first stitch here to create two and round one to have a like complete round we're going to be inserting our hook into the stitch where the stitch marker is located so basically insert your hook into the same stitch here you should be going under a v now after inserting your hook you can remove the stitch marker after that, we're going to do a slip stitch to join. So to do a slip stitch, you yarn over first, then pull it through the stitch, and then also pull it through the loop on your hook. And then we need to tighten it. So congratulations, we've completed round one. We're gonna start round two now. So it's basically gonna be the same thing, round two and onwards. It is the exact same thing. So if you could do round one, I'm 100% sure you'll be able to finish the whole piece. So to start round two, we're gonna chain two. And the reason why we're gonna chain two is that, as you can see, the double crochet is pretty tall. So to start around, you actually need to give height for that stitch. So that height would be two chains. So yarn over first. Pull it through the loop on your hook just like just like how we did for the foundation chains same thing so first chain yarn over pull it through the loop on your hook now we got two v's this is the chain two now we're going to do our very first stitch in round two so yarn over first then where are we going to be inserting our hook into basically when you look at your piece on the top there's a bunch of v's so when we make a stitch from now on we're going under a v so we're going to be inserting our hook into the very first stitch so the here is our chain the closest v to our chain on its left is the very first stitch so in this case here it is this v right here it is closest to our chain so this is the very first stitch we're going to go under the V just like this and then place our very first double crochet so this is my first stitch and as usual for the very first stitch in each round we're gonna label it we're gonna use a stitch marker we need to look at our work from the top and you can see that there is a V at the top. We're going to be inserting our 
stitch marker into that V to indicate that it's the very first stitch. So it's easier for us to join to the very first stitch at the end of each round. So from now on, what we're gonna do is that we're gonna place one single double crochet all across the round here. Let's start with our second double crochet. So yarn over first. Then we're gonna be inserting our hook into the next V. So this V on the right here is already occupied. It is the first stitch. Now the V next to it on its left is the second V, second stitch. We go under the V, then place a double crochet. And then again for the third one, yarn over first, then the next stitch is here, which is on the left of its previous stitch. Insert it. You're going under a V. Yarn over, pull it through. So yarn over and then insert your hook into the next stitch. Go under a V and then place a double crochet. Basically, we're just going to repeat this all across, placing one double crochet all across here until the end. And now I'm on the side here and the side is exactly the same, just placing one double crochet in each and every stitch. So just like this, nothing has changed. And then automatically you'll be transitioned to the other side of the pouch. You'll be working on this side. So for example, you did an increase, which is two double crochet in one stitch. I accidentally did this, but no worries. Just pull the working yarn and that would unravel the stitch. And you can just continue with your work. So now I've finished my round and I've reached the end of my stitch. So now I've completed round two. To finish off round two, we need to join to the very first stitch because as you can see here, there is an opening here. So we need to join to the very first stitch to close it up and then start another round. So to close it, we need to insert our hook into where the stitch marker is placed at. So exactly here. And then after inserting it, you can just remove your stitch marker. And then we're gonna do a slip stitch. To do a slip stitch, yarn over, bring the hook on top of the working yarn, then pull it through the stitch, just like this. With the loop that we pulled up, we pull it through the loop on our hook, like this. After pulling it through, we need to tighten it. And this step is very, very important. Make sure to tighten it. Then now we can start round three. And as I mentioned before, round two and onwards is exactly the same as round two. First, we're gonna be starting our round with chain two. So to chain two, yarn over, then pull it through the loop on our hook. And this creates a V, which is a chain. For the second one, yarn over, pull it through the loop on our hook, which is the same thing. Now let's start around three. First, we're gonna place the double crochet into the very first stitch. So we're gonna find the very first stitch. It's essentially the, the first V next to the chain two. So you can see chain two is right here. The V that's right next to it is this one. So we're gonna place our double crochet into that stitch. Just like this. Going under a V and place a double crochet. After the very first stitch, don't forget to add your stitch marker here. So if you look at your stitch from above, the very top V is where you insert your hook, insert your stitch marker into. Then place your hook back into the loop. And then just continue with the round. So I'm just going to do my second double crochet here. This is the next stitch, so I'm basically going into under a V and then 
do a stitch. Then I'm going to continue. I've done three stitches for round three, and then for each of the stitch, which is each of the V here, there will be one double crochet. Now I've finished my last stitch for round three, I'm going to join to the very first stitch to finish up round three. So I'm going to insert my hook into this stitch here, into the very first stitch where the stitch marker is at. Then remove my stitch marker. And then do a slip stitch. To do a slip stitch, yarn over, pull it through the, the stitch, then pull it through the loop on your hook. Then pull tight like this. And then to start round four, chain two, yarn over, pull it through the loop on your hook, yarn over, pull it through the loop on your hook, just like this. We're gonna repeat this for however long you want your pouch to be. So I'm just gonna do a total of round 11. So I have seven more rounds to go. If you forgot how to do the rounds, just rewatch round two and round three, it's the exact same. So yeah, I'll meet you guys when I'm done. So now I'm up to round 10 and then for round 11, it is going to be the same but just in a different color. So I'm just going to have this prepared here. Then I'm just going to do a normal slip stitch. Find the very first stitch, insert your hook into that. Now we're going to do a slip stitch. Instead of grabbing the white yarn and then yarning over like this, we're going to grab the new yarn and then just place it like this, pull it through. Pretend it is like the white yarn and then also pull it through the loop on your hook just like a normal slip stitch Then we're going to pull the white yarn, which is like the original yarn color yarn Then we're going to cut it Now from now on we're gonna be working with our yellow yarn So after this color change, nothing has changed. Basically, just repeat what we've been doing. So just chain two for round 11. So yarn over, pull it through, yarn over, pull it through. So basically repeat what we've been doing for the past 10 rounds, but it's just in a different color, but don't stress out. It is literally the same thing. For these two tail, remember to pull them. So I would just tie them. So I would just tie a knot here I probably would do a double knot just to secure it so now I'm just going to place my very first stitch so now I'm just going to do my very first double crochet so yarn over insert your hook into the very first stitch and remember when you insert your hook, make sure that the yellow color yarn is caught on your hook so that we don't have to weave in later. Then do a normal double crochet. Just like this. And then you can put a stitch marker here in the very first stitch if you want to. So I'm gonna finish it off just like how I did before. Basically nothing has changed except for the color only. So I finished my round 11, now I'm going to do a slip stitch to the very first stitch. And then tighten it. So on the very top of our drawstring pouch, we're going to do an edging and it's going to be like little curves. So the pattern for round 12 is going to be chain 3, skip a stitch, slip stitch into the second stitch. And then chain 3, skip a stitch, slip stitch into the second stitch and then this repeats until the end so now first we're gonna do chain three yarn over pull it through the loop on your hook yarn over pull it through yarn over pull through so this stitch right here is where we're supposed to be doing our very first stitch but we're going to skip a stitch slip stitch into the second stitch which is here 
insert your hook into that stitch, do a slip stitch, so yarn over, pull it through the stitch, and also pull it through the loop on your hook, and then tighten it. And as you can see, it will create that little like curve there. We're gonna repeat this. So again, chain three, yarn over, pull it through the loop on your hook, yarn over, pull it through the loop on your hook. So now that you have chain three, we're going to skip the next stitch here, slip stitch into the second stitch. Yarn over, pull it through the stitch, pull it through the loop on your hook, and then tighten it. So we're gonna repeat this again, yarn over, pull it through the loop on your hook, chain three basically, and then we're gonna skip the next stitch and then slip stitch into the second stitch. Insert your hook, do a slip stitch, yarn over, pull it through the stitch, and then pull it through the loop on your hook and then tighten it just like this then again yarn over pull it through the loop on your hook yarn over pull through yarn over pull through so we're going to skip a stitch insert your hook into the second stitch right here yarn over pull it through pull it through the loop on your hook just like this so again chain three it's my second chain, my third chain here. This is our next stitch. Skip a stitch, so we're going to be inserting our hook here. Yarn over, pull it through. Pull it through the loop on our hook as well. And then tighten it. So we're basically going to repeat this until the end. So now I'm on last stitch and then I'm just going to chain three and then this little bit special I'm just going to insert it into the next stitch because we ran out of stitch and then just do a slip stitch here. After this we're going to fasten off because we've completed round 12. So now to fasten off we're going to chain one so yarn over pull it through the loop on your hook then pull a big loop like then we're going to cut it and then that would fasten it off and then pull this tail so right now you have something that looks like this now we're going to weave in so weaving in essentially it means to hide the tail so i'm gonna thread the tail through the darning needle then we're going to be working from the inside of the pouch now we're going to be inserting our needle into the loops in round 11 which is like a bunch of um double crochet we're going to insert our needle like in the middle of the double crochet like this remember when you're doing it make sure to check from the outside of the pouch to check if the needle is sticking out if it's sticking out then you need to undo it because the tail needs to stay hidden so for example i am checking from the outside of the pouch you can see that my needle is clearly showing from the outside and i have to undo that and then do it again to make sure that i'm going into the inside of the stitch just like this now i'm just going to pull it through and stretch your stitches after that i'm just gonna cut it here and your tail shouldn't be showing from the outside so if you did a color change here you should have another tail here we're going to do the exact same thing so thread the tail through the darning needle then we're going to then we're gonna go through the stitches then i'm just gonna pull it through and then stretch my stitches and then cut the tail so now you should have something that looks like this now we're gonna go ahead and make the strap for the pouch so the strap for the pouch i like to use the bottom color which is white and then when it's like thread through the top color it's gonna look really cute basically the whole strap is a bunch of chains so basically you can look at it as like a foundation chain 
which we've done when we did um, the bottom here. So we're gonna repeat what we've done at the beginning of making this pouch, which is to make the foundation chain. Grab the towel on your right hand, and then I'm for my left hand, I'm pointing up two fingers. Then I'm going to wrap the yarn around my two fingers like this. Now I have a loop on my left and then a tail on my right. I'm going to pull the tail through the loop on my left. So I'm just going to grab the tail like this and then and then pull. We're going to pull this tail to make the loop smaller and then insert our hook into the loop. And pull the loop just right like this so that the hook can slide easily. Now we're going to start chaining. I'm pretty sure everyone is pretty familiar with chaining now. Yarn over, pull it through the loop on your hook, just like this. Then keep making this. We're gonna make it a pretty long chain because it has to wrap around this whole pouch and extra. So I've chained this long, let me test it. So the so it is like long enough, but I just want this part to be a little bit longer. So now it looks okay, then I can go ahead and pull this and then pull it to tighten it. Then we're gonna thread this through our darning needle. And now we're gonna thread so thread either so just thread like one of the tails now we're gonna make the straps so we're gonna place our needle two double crochet under and then two double crochet on top and then two double crochet under two double crochet on top so i'm just gonna start with under so i'm placing my needle under two double crochet here and then i'm gonna go over two double crochet and then go under two double crochet again so it looks like this and then over two double crochet and then under two double crochet and then i need to pull it through because my darning needle is not that long so after that i'm gonna go over over two darning needle and then under two darning needle over two darning needle wait no under two double crochet i'm sorry guys and then two under and I'm also going to pull it through. So it will look like this. And then now I'm gonna go over. So go under two. And then over two. Under two. Just like this. side is very short the other side is very long just adjust it until two sides is equal now we're gonna double knot this end these two ends together so just tie one oh. like this then for these two tails you can either cut it or you can thread it through into the chains Basically just like go through like random loops of the chain And then for the end here, it might be like sticking out So I would just like to like glue the end so it wouldn't show and it would just stay in place like this So I would just add some glue Stick it at the end of the tail here So now we've basically finished the pouch and you can add anything on top of the pouch. You can add a flower. And for me, I like it to be a bow. So I'm just gonna cut a yellow color yarn. Then I would just tie a bow.
and then I would add a bit of the glue in the middle and I'm just gonna stick it in the middle of the pouch So yeah, this is the end of the tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I usually do crochet live stream on the weekends and that's where we chat and like just like chill together. It's like a FaceTime call. So yeah, I'll see you guys there. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on notification bell. That way you don't miss a tutorial just like this one. So yeah, I'll see you guys next time. Bye!